Can you imagine your life where money is your friend, working with you to achieve all your dreams and desires? If you struggle seeing money as your friend, then join Kathy Cook Noble, financial advisor and educator on understanding how your money can work for you. It is possible. Now, here is Financially Speaking with Kathy Cook Noble. Good afternoon and welcome to Financially Speaking. I am Kathy Cook Noble, your host, and we're going to be hanging out a little bit for the next hour and talking to my special guest, which I'm super excited to have. And I'm going to introduce you to Lori Hawkins and let you know that she is one of the most spectacular people I've had the privilege to get to know. And she is a huge success in her business. She's got some fantastic skills she's going to share with us on sales and community and supporting women in business. And you have the opportunity, if you want to call in, you can call in and talk to her or you can meet us in the chat room and ask her questions. Just to give a little heads up, I'm going to read to you a little bit about Lori and introduce you to her. Lori is driven by a passion for results, a successful business leader for over 20 years. She understands the challenges of connecting with customers in today's market and how traditional sales and service methodologies are not driving the desired results. Lori has studied the habits of top performers and organizations in the areas of sales, service, and organizational culture. She leverages her education, experiences, and insights to create programs that assist organizations to drive results in today's competitive market. SOAR is a community for smart, savvy businesswomen who are committed to building themselves both professionally and personally. It's about the intersection of insights, ideas, imagination, and inspiration that will allow you to radiate, renew, and thrive in your life and business. SOAR is on a quest to create a powerful key for women to share, learn, grow, and simply awaken their souls to all that is possible. And this is the organization that Lori has founded. And I'm very excited to present and introduce uh, my friend Lori Hawkins to you. Lori, welcome to the show. Well, thank you so much, Kathy. I'm super excited to be here with you. And, um, you know, you, you said that you feel honored to know me. In the past year, one of my greatest highlights has been meeting you, connecting with you, and creating this deep connection that we have. It's awesome. You're awesome. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's great. Thank you, Lori. Um, and I'm so happy you agreed to come on the show. I know uh, sometimes finances are, and this is where our show comes from, actually, financially speaking, where it's that that dreaded F word where people are afraid to talk about it and it scares them and they think they can't understand it. And I know you're one of those women that does not get scared by the F word and that you also think that it's very easy and simple to understand. And that's really, really cool that we're both able to be together at the same time and not be scared of the F word. <laughs> mm-hmm. Absolutely. And, you know, it's, I think it's so important and, and why I love what you're doing. So important for women to understand their finances and to not be afraid of them because there's so much power in that, in, in really truly connecting with how we make money, how we spend our money. <laughs> I'm a fan of that part, and um, yep. you know, just really understanding how to create wealth so that we can exactly. help more people. I, I've always thought the more we have, the more we can help. So, absolutely, I, I love, love that. that. I love that. <laughs> I know, I know, and it's so it's so much fun, and that's what I really I'm excited because we can share that with people. And tonight, we're mm-hmm. also going to share another fear that people have. Actually, I guess two really, especially women. One is sales. And I know that is your area of expertise for sure. And that is a fear that a lot of people, men and women, have. So that's definitely something you're going to be able to help with tonight. And the other thing is really where women can get support with other women in business and help them propel them to another level that they want to get to. And I know you're able to do that with the SOAR community that you've been, that you've created. And it's just been a beautiful success. And I'm excited to hear about that too. So, Let's talk a little bit about you and how you came around to this sales uh, expertise because really it's a it's quite a challenge for a lot of people, especially in business, to, to deal with sales. And you came on it very early on and very successfully, and you've done great training for a lot of big companies and, and organizations. So share with us a little bit, if you would, about the whole sales part of your life. Well, I think... First of all, uh, I'm really blessed to have 
a, a mentor who was my father teach me at a very young age and, and young enough that I didn't know any better. So I just trusted what he shared with me, which was sales is really important. It's a skill like finances, you know, not fearing finances, not fearing sales is as critical in our lives. And so when I was about 12 years old, uh, he had me start my quote unquote first business. (laughs) And that was that I would bake pies and um, cookies and all sorts of other things. And we, I grew up on a farm in southwestern Ontario, and we would get in the truck and go to the local campground and drive around and sell these pies that I had made. And he really taught me, you know, there was nothing scary in that. There was nothing awkward in that because it was just about helping people have something they wanted. They're there on the weekends. It's summer. They want some awesome baking, Right. And and also that it's about connection. So, um, you know, we weren't walking around the campground acting like um, annoying used car salesmen. It was really, hey, we have this, and then you would talk to people and hear their stories. So I learned from that young age that it was connection, it was community, it was caring, and it was just really helping people with what they needed. And then the following summer, then um, similar, I grew a crop of cucumbers and sold the cucumbers to the local cannery. So just from that young age, I saw the importance of being able to connect with people and build community. And ultimately, later, when I when I went in the corporate world as a salesperson, that was just a foundation that I had. So would it be fair to say that your dad really didn't approach it as a sales training? And he probably didn't even use the word sales. I'm guessing, but was it more of a, just a connection with people and how to build relationships? Cause it sounds more like you were having a relationship with people when you sold them your pies or cucumbers or whatever it is. So do you think the introduction of how he started you off in sales is a big difference with how other people get started in sales? See, it's interesting because he did use the word sales. He would tell me and, and share with, I have two brothers, same thing. If you want to succeed in business and life, you need to understand sales and how to sell and how to connect with people. But what he taught us or what he showed us is creation, community, helping people. And so our definition, my definition from a young age was that, whereas I think for other people, their definition is yucky, sleazy, noxious, pushy, and and so if you go through life feeling that and then all of a sudden you start your own business or you end up working for someone else and, I mean, everybody has to sell. It doesn't matter what position you're in, especially if you're an entrepreneur. I mean, the most important thing is not the product or service you offer. It's your ability to connect with people and share that, which is selling. So I think that we've just got this definition, even a, a few organizations when I've met with them and they've brought me in and they want, they say, don't use the word sale, don't use the word sell. And I really encourage them to let me use that word. Let people get comfortable with it so that they understand it's not the definition that they thought it was. Absolutely. That's, that's such a great healthy outlook too. And I, I think that probably you'll say the same. You found in business that, there's a lot of areas that people get a little bit nervous, but sales has got to be the biggest one. I mean, finance is a little bit scary to people, but when it comes to business, it, truthfully, there's not a lot of people in the finance department that are are looking at the finances, but the whole organization is affected by sales, and the whole organization is essentially in the on the sales team, aren't they? No matter how size it, how big the size is. Well, the the reality is, right? If we don't sell what we have, then we don't have a business. And so the sales function of an organization is really the heartbeat of a company and why I'm so passionate about helping entrepreneurs understand it's the heartbeat of what they do as well. And so if you can remove that, that fear and also remove some of the old tactics people have been taught because they're out there. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Do you so when you go in to help an organization, no matter the, the size, uh, is there a, a specific system that you would 
would bring in or do you tailor that to the organization that you're dealing with at the time? I tailor it specifically to the organization. So one of the things that I feel is really important when it comes to sales is I want to connect with the people in the organization because I always say business is simple. People are complicated. So if I understand the people and I understand their deepest desires, their dreams, let's call them, and then I understand how the organization functions as far as connecting with their customers, then I'm able to really understand what value I might be able to bring in that puzzle. And it's different for every organization. So what I tell people is I'm not a binder on a shelf. I do not agree with that type of sales training. I think there's some... There's some fundamentals that never change when it comes to sales. And then there's some things that have changed dramatically. And so I think it's important to have a system. I think we always need a system to follow when it comes to business success. At the same time, it needs to connect with who we are as people and who an organization is as a whole. Absolutely. Very, very true. I think you're absolutely right on with that. Um, And I think that's, that's a big part of what's missing, isn't it, in a lot of the organizations is it's typically, and I see this with the finances, they start out with, you know, you and I go into business and we grow, we grow and we grow and we're still running the business like it's you and I, but we've got all these other people and all these other sales now and the, they just don't keep up with the system or they don't implement a system. And that's really how a lot of them get lost or get into trouble or can't really expand past that point that they want to be at. And don't you find that the same with their sales? And it's really a system that they're missing, and and they they've kind of been doing it their own way, and it's gotten to a certain point. But to get to the next level, that's where you have to really get organized, don't you think? Oh, I completely agree. I think that, um, and especially again when we look at entrepreneurs, right? Or I guess any stage in a business where they've they've kind of hit a peak, and they're sitting and reflecting on how do we get to the next level systems would be a big part of that conversation, I would say, because you need something yeah. consistent to follow, and then you can be creative within your consistency. You have to have the consistency first. Yeah, that's great. And I people like that. Can bring their own, yeah. And people can bring their own flair, right? So it's, it's, I think every personality is what makes a salesperson, let's call them, or someone selling successful is who they are. It's their unique skills and gifts and attributes and personality, all of that combined. But they will be more successful if they do that within a consistent system. So when someone, you hear these different, yeah, it totally makes sense. And and I think you're right on. Like, yeah. Um, And just, you know, you hear those sales uh, programs, we'll call them. And the natural born salesperson and you hear people say, well, I wasn't, I'm not naturally engineered to be a salesperson. So would you say that really everybody is naturally born to be a salesperson or nobody's naturally born to be a salesperson, but they can learn it? So how would, how would you say that is, or do you just think that some people are just naturally gifted that way? So the same as the born leaving conversation, right? Um, I really think, and actually, again, if we look at entrepreneurs, this is an interesting conversation because if you have um, someone could be in construction and someone could be um, opening up a style business and someone could be doing finance and someone could be selling, uh, what else? I don't know. We know so many entrepreneurs. <laughs> and, and all of a sudden, if we start talking about each of those individuals, they are now a salesperson. Right. So do I believe that they all have the ability to succeed is really the question. Um, Some of them will be more natural than others. So some of them will have gifts they were born with. At the same time, I think, like even if I look at myself personally, I think I have some of those natural attributes and I've practiced my skills as if I'm a professional at it. Right. I, I mean, I always use the analogy with my teams of, Let's look at competitive sports teams. Yep. So I don't, Tom Brady, I think is one of the best 
um, quarterbacks that exist. I'm not a big football fan, but I know Tom Brady. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, yep. But, but he's, if we looked at his life and how much time he has spent in practice of his craft, so would people yeah. say he was born naturally with that talent or would we say he developed that talent? Could right. he have done it if he didn't have the natural talent? Not to the degree he's done it. So I really think that we all have natural gifts we're born with and we all need to take the time to practice our craft and our skills and the different skills that maybe aren't natural to us so that we can become effective. And I really think I have worked with across the board, every personality style, and of them have been able to be successful. Awesome. That's, and it's also really yeah. encouraging for everybody. I know a lot of people are like, oh, yeah, that's fine for her or that's fine for him, but I couldn't do it. Right. And the reality is you, you right. could help them do it. Yeah. Yeah. So, and where did you come the even introverts, I think introvert versus extrovert is a really interesting conversation with sales, right? Because a lot of introverts say, oh, oh, well, you're an extrovert, so that's easy for you. Well, one of the most successful salespeople I've worked with in the last 10 years is an intense introvert and just has created systems that work for her within her personality style and taken the fear away from it. Nice. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. And I, I, mm -hmm. it's nice because I know this is true of you, but I, I know other people need to know this is true and that you have that ability to bring that out in people. And I saw that myself at the SOAR community event not too long ago. And we're going to talk about that. We're coming up to our first break and we're going to talk about that. If that's all right, when we get back, we're going to talk to Lori about the SOAR community and how she's created this beautiful, uh, smart, savvy businesswoman to embrace their business and and grow and learn and part of her training was actually on the sales side of things which we were just talking about so when we return we're going to talk about that we're going to go to our break you are listening to financially speaking with myself kathy cook noble on the inspired choices network and when we return we're going to continue to discuss all about uh business and sales and i'm going to tell you a little secret about Lori on the sacred gifts, which we will talk more about when we get back. We'll be right back. Too many of us get caught up in the unreal lives of reality television and complete to acquire stuff, which is setting us up to accumulate lots of debt. We're scared, confused, and don't know who to talk to. By tuning into Financially Speaking Radio Show with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook Noble, you'll learn tips you can use to improve your financial health, which in turn can improve your overall health and make for a very happy life. Live a life you can afford and enjoy. It is possible. Listen for Financially Speaking Radio Show every Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Mountain, and 1 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is Financially Speaking Radio Show with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook Noble. To participate in the program, call in the U.S. 815-880-8255, Canada 613-800-8736, or Skype us at Inspired Choices Network. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to kathy at bookkeepplus.ca. Now back to the program. Welcome back, everyone. I am Kathy Cook Noble on the Inspire Choices Network, and today we are talking to Lori Hawkins, and we've been talking to her 
just before the break about sales and how that's the driving force of business and how you're able to start with whatever gifts that you were were given at the beginning and be able to enhance them and grow with them and learn from Lori on how to really hone your skill into becoming a great salesperson. And a salesperson not in the sense where it kind of makes your skin crawl when we picture the the slimy car salesman. And I say that jokingly because I used to be a car salesman. And they're not all slimy, and I know that. <laughs> but... Uh, that 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 is the image that people get when they think of a slimy salesperson, the car salesman, and and uh, I I always laugh at that because that's just what it is, and I don't really picture me in that category, but I was for like twenty twenty five years, so <laughs> anyway, it's a lot of fun, and I'm I'm uh, excited to have Lori here. Before the break, I mentioned uh, about the SOAR community that you had founded, and it's a it's a beautiful community, and it's brought together some smart savvy business women and they're able to build their build on their business and also build on their themselves and their own skills and I mentioned that uh, just a couple weeks ago now that you did the training on the sales component of it and it was I was lucky enough to be there and it was fantastic I can't believe how smooth and easy it sounded to do it and how easy it was to implement so if you can if you want just for uh, share with our listeners, Lori, about the SOAR community and more about it, because I know I didn't do it the justice it deserves, but if you could just share where it came from and, and your your idea behind starting it and everything, that would be awesome. Oh, I think you did a great job of explaining it, and I would be <laughs> happy to, to share a little bit more. I want to, um, before I jump into SOAR, I want to tell a quick, funny story from SOAR. Uh, we actually yeah. had someone stand up and say how much they hated selling, and then went on to talk about instead of selling, they focus on connection and communication and creation. And uh, and then I had the opportunity to stand up after and say, isn't it interesting? Does anyone else connect with those three <laughs> words? And, of course, everyone was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, that sales. And I think that that's just the interesting dichotomy of this whole conversation, Right. Um, so let me yeah. flip to SOAR. Uh, SOAR really is, for me, I've had this passion on my heart for a long time to really create, I actually really wanted to be a part of a community where amazing, energetic, um, highly you know, knowledgeable and loved learning and growing and, and that smart, savvy, connected, incredible businesswoman wanted to create or wanted to be together and I couldn't find it. I couldn't quite find what I was looking for because I also want that soul piece. So I think there's amazing business events all over the place and there's really wonderful communities where you can go focus on your wellness and, and really do some deep soul work. What I couldn't seem to find in our area was something where you could go do both. And so as I explored, I thought, okay, let's just create it then and attract those women like you and like myself to be together in community, to find a sense of belonging where we could grow ourselves both our mind and our hearts and our souls and, and really just, you know, just have amazing energy. And so exactly. And, and, and that's exactly how it is too. That's, that's beautiful. And it's grown pretty quickly. And I know for our listeners out there, we've got some people in the U.S. and, and Canada and, and other parts of the world. And I know right now SOAR is pretty um, dedicated to the Ontario market in Canada here. But it will be expanding. Is that? And if you could just share the future plans for it on expansion Absolutely. and how people can can join and and create, become part of this creation. So the, the short term is that we've got a, com a community here, which is live, and we have monthly symposiums where we're connecting. One of the things that I think is really important for women to engage in is uplifting each other more. I really struggle, I'm going to say struggle, with, and I'm saddened by women not being focused on uplifting each other. 
I see a lot of judgment. I see a lot of, um, and it's probably a lot of it is self-judgment, but just a, it, women seem to struggle to do this thing called uplift. And so part of SOAR is also about how do we uplift each other? How do we mentor those that are coming behind us? How do we be mentored by those ahead of us? How do we learn knowledge from people that have an expertise in different areas? So SOAR is, is not about me. I really say I'm the catalyst of bringing everybody together that has the unique skills and attributes that they can share with the community. And so it really is a community where we want to form this sense of belonging, where people can share their greatest gifts. And and that isn't just meant to be one live location in, in London, Ontario. So longer term, um, we do have an online community that has started, and it can be found at SOAR Community on Facebook. Anyone is welcome to join that community and just be a part of the conversation online right now. Soon there will be live chats on there. There will be um, monthly conversations about different different topics that are of interest. So lots will grow in the online community over the next few months. And then longer term, we'll just keep growing. Perfect. And right now, so every month you have a different topic, uh, basically, where there's a special um, presentation, we'll call it, in the SOAR community. But you do have a common theme throughout the community, like the way that the agenda is set. So you have... um, People come in and you, you, the way you have it set up, I guess, is what I'm saying is it's very conducive to sharing and relationship building and uplifting each other, like you said. And I think that's part of the really, really beautiful part of your, what you've created is that you really encourage other women to share their story, ask questions, be involved. And when you say it's not about you, um, it's not about you in the sense where it's, you get up there and the whole the whole event's about you and you talk all the time and, and whatever, but it's about you in the sense that it really came from your heart and it really built the foundation for a, a beautiful community to grow on, I think. And that's what I think is so cool about it is there's so much learning that I know a lot of the women were talking about that they got from you on the last event when you had the sales training, which was awesome. I, I learned so much and, and I was a used car salesman. <laughs> so that was really cool. <laughs> and uh, and me, I can and me see. Know that. Uh, <laughs> sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was going to say, and meet that aspect that you did a piece on, on the F word, <laughs> your yeah. favorite F word, F fun. Right. And mm-hmm. and then someone else did a piece on how their dislike of sales and how we could connect to that. And someone else did a piece on incorporating essential oils in your life. So it's really finding yeah. that, let's call it whole person that we are and, and finding pieces that can, you know, I'm saying infuse the mind and imprint the heart. Beautiful. And that's so true. Mm-hmm. And that is exactly, that is exactly how the community is. And, And it's exciting to see that it's growing and that people are going to have access, not just here in our Ontario area, but also we're going to, you're going to be able to share that experience across the board and even into the United States and, and other places, because it's really, there's no barrier or no border between how women are working in business, I think, and how they can help each other and how they can really support each other, because that's, that doesn't there's no border that it stops at where women are like, nope, we don't do that here. <laughs> we can do that everywhere. No. And I think that's great that that's you're pulling that all together for everybody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is awesome. And I mentioned just before the break, I threw in a little teaser or something called Sacred Gifts. And it ties in beautifully with the SOAR community and we're we're just up to our second break now, but I really want to ask you about the Sacred Gifts because I never heard of it until you and it was very powerful, just to say the least. And we'll talk about that after the break, if that's okay with you, Lori. We'll um, we'll take our second break. Excellent. And when we come back, we're going to talk to Lori about this sacred gift, so you don't want to miss that part. Uh, you are listening to Financially Speaking with myself, Kathy Knoble, on the Inspired Choices Network. And when we return, we're going to continue to talk to Lori Hawkins, and she's going to tell us all about sacred gifts. We'll be right back. 
Too many of us get caught up in the unreal lives of reality television and complete to acquire stuff, which is setting us up to accumulate lots of debt. We're scared, confused, and don't know who to talk to. By tuning into Financially Speaking Radio Show with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook Noble, you'll learn tips you can use to improve your financial health, which in turn can improve your overall health and make for a very happy life. Live a life you can afford and enjoy. It is possible. Listen for Financially Speaking Radio Show every Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Mountain, and 1 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is Financially Speaking Radio Show with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook Noble. To participate in the program, call in the U.S. 815-880-8255, Canada 613-800-8736, or Skype us at Inspired Choices Network. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to kathy at bookkeepplus.ca. Now back to the program. Welcome back, everyone. I am Kathy Cook-Noble on the Inspired Choices Network, and today we're talking to Lori Hawkins. Just before we went to break, we were talking about the SOAR community that she established and how it's going to be growing and accessible to our friends in the United States as well as across Canada. And we also talked to her at the beginning of the show about sales and how that really is a technique that you can learn and be comfortable with and really help grow your business. That leads us into Lori's third area that I want to talk to her about, which is the sacred gift. And and the cool thing, I, I think, Lori, when, when you tell us about this, is I find that you're accessible to everybody. Like, you can do the one-on-one training with the sales. We have the SOAR community where people can come together online through the SOAR community on Facebook or live in person. We're now just in Ontario, but it'll be growing. And then the sacred gifts part that you're going to share, that's for anybody really anywhere that they can work with you on. And I hadn't heard of it before because, you know, that's not really stuff that we talk about in finance, right? If it doesn't add up to numbers and have a formula, <laughs> then it's a little bit harder for us to, to touch and feel. But uh, when I it was blown away. I think it was one of the coolest experiences having learned this from you. And if you can share that with our listeners and then uh, share with them how they can even get a hold of you because I know that's something you can help them with, um in various different formats. Yeah, discovering your sacred gift is something that was actually introduced to me, I'm going to say 18 months ago now, and was life-changing for me. I actually do a lot of assessment tools. I believe in assessment tools when I work with my companies and my team. And so all of all of my customers actually go through an assessment tool of some sort. And then I found was introduced to sacred gifts. And what was really interesting to me is there's all these you'll love this, the finance side. There's <laughs> lots of logical tools out there. They're all logic based, right? And they're really important. The reason I love assessments is communication is the number one most important foundation to have in any relationship. And where communication breaks down is usually because we don't understand the other person's style or we're not open to understanding, we don't know how to adapt. And so I really find using assessments as a foundation helps teams communicate more effectively because they understand themselves and then they understand each other. And then add sacred gifts on top of this, people start to emotionally connect with their true inner gifts. So they have this logic of the behavior style and link it with the emotion of the sacred gift. And what's really powerful for me about this is we, we've all been raised, everyone's heard from the very young age, we, we all have gifts, right? We all have unique gifts. Some people might say we all have God-given gifts. And yet I know I spent a lifetime going, oh, I wonder what those are. Okay, well, at some point I'll get a sign. Somehow I'll figure it out. And then went through this process of discovering my own sacred gift 
and realizing, I think the deepest connection and, and yourself and others I've worked through with this is it's so innate to us, we don't even recognize that it's actually our superpower. It's our sacred gift. And when we can connect to that, all of a sudden there's this confidence of living in that space, of making sure that you somehow incorporate these gifts into your business, into your life. And I think, and maybe you can comment on this, I feel like it just gives people freedom to actually know that they can stop trying to work so hard to find this big meaning in life or this big purpose in life. So I think people are chasing that. There's so much conversation around purpose, whereas the sacred gifts help you feel on purpose. And as long as you feel on purpose every day, you're making a big difference. Absolutely, I think you're you're right. And I know for me, um, I don't, I certainly don't have the experience that you do, and I'm not certified. As I know, you are one of the few in Canada who is. But um, what I I found was um, the what you're looking for. People that are looking all the time to learn this skill or hone in on this skill or I have to get better on this. And they're forgetting that they have these gifts that they just take for granted, that you just happen to be, for example, you might just be really good at organizing things or keeping, you know, a whole bunch of events going at the same time. And you just take for granted that that's just, well, that's just natural. Of course, you can do that. But that's not just natural for everybody. And some people need help with getting organized in that example. And this was one of the things that I learned was I thought, well, Everybody knows about finance. Everybody understands. It's easy, right? One plus one equals two or, you know, sometimes it's a negative or whatever the number is. And it just, it's natural. Of course people would know this. And, and it's not. It's not natural for everybody. And it's funny because I look at and I think, and I think I talked to you about this when we were going through that process was the playing the piano part. Like I took the lessons. I can read the notes. I can hit the keys and I can play the song. But it doesn't really sound the same way as when my sister plays the piano. She feels it, and that's that's a true gift for her. I learned how to play the piano, but I would never say I was a, a piano player or a pianist because when she plays it, I mean, she her, her whole body feels every note. I'm, you know, I'm as stiff as a board, and I play the notes, and that's how it, and that's how it's mathematically supposed to work. But she feels she feels it, and she, you know, taps her feet and. And it's a whole different story when she plays. And and that was the really cool thing I learned with the sacred gifts was that most, and I think most people, that the gifts they have, they might take for granted because they just think that they should be more, they should know more, they should do more, they should be more. And they just take for granted some of the gifts that they already have. Is that what you found with the different classes that you've done and training? And I, you're bang on. And I think even even deeper to the point is, you're searching for something else because they don't feel like a gift to you because they're so natural. But you're searching for this thing that you're right. told you're supposed to have and not actually recognizing those which are gifts to you. And I think something you said about feeling like everyone understands numbers the way you are, they don't. And that's what is a gift yeah. for you is to have you know, the package of sacred gifts you have enables you to educate and inspire people about finances in such a unique way. When I started my business, I didn't even do sales training. I said, oh, there's so many sales trainers out there. I don't have anything unique there. That is the story I hear quite often from people because they don't recognize their sacred gifts. And the second you connect with them, all of a sudden, it's like this big aha. And then I also think it removes judgment towards others. So you recognize your own and then you realize some of the things that you see in other people that maybe in the past have been a frustration. It's actually people's sacred gifts at play. And it's, when you discover really your sacred gifts, it, it, it is. It's really cool. And do you find mm-hmm. that when people discover their sacred gifts, that they're uh, able to really, really fine-tune their business. And in in particular, if they really get in tune with what their sacred gifts are and embrace what they're good at and really 
focus on making them the best they can be, then that helps them with the other parts that maybe they're not as good at. For example, we talked about sales. If they think they're not good in sales, but they know where they are good in really certain places and they understand people and their sacred gifts better, then they're able to even deal and talk to different people on a different level because they're recognizing that this is my gift and this is probably the other person's gift, so I'm able now to negotiate with them in a way that I couldn't before. So even just that level, would that that would be something that would help them with their sales and their business, wouldn't it? Absolutely. Because also, instead of trying to fit into a mold, because there's no mold, right? But people try to fit into yeah. a mold. So instead of trying to fit into the mold, now it's what I what I really notice in people is a new level of confidence once they connect to discovering their gifts. It also just gives a sense of calmness. And and the thing I've really noticed is people start to streamline. You you hear all the time, right? Pick your lane, make sure that you're not trying to be all things to everybody. And I've really seen that sacred gift allows people to to hone in on that and stop trying all these different things. Like I, I have actually dozens of stories right now from Discovering Your Sacred Gifts where people have just calmed down, chosen their thing, and are just focused on that in a way they've never been before. And and actually that was awesome. my own experience too and really why I wanted to do the certification because it's it's just this, it's just giving people such confidence to to live their sacred gifts once they recognize them. And where can people get a hold of you if they want to talk to you about anything, but if they wanted to explore the sacred gifts program more, how would they get in touch with you? So right now, people can reach me probably best through my email, which is Lori, L-A-U-R-I-E, at Hawk inspired.com Lori at hawkinspired.com and anyone can just send me an email and I will be thrilled to have a conversation about it excellent and that's the sacred gifts is something that I I think it's so cool because you've really got you've pulled all the pieces together You've, you've got of course you've got the successful sales background and training background and and consulting part of the of your business and then you've got the SOAR community that that brings a lot of different types of people together but with similar goals and similar needs and desires and then you've able to add this part of the sacred gifts in there and that really helps people find the way in which to make all this work together so it's really cool how you've pulled the whole thing together and I really encourage anybody out there to get a hold of Lori and even if you run with you if you talk to her about the sacred gifts program and how you can go through it and learn what your sacred gifts are it helps you not just in your business but it also helps you with your family relationships and with just generally in life when your daily opportunities come along you're going to be in a better mind frame and a better position to uh talk to people on a level that really fits with their with their own sacred gifts uh, we're up to our third break. We're just going to take and then we'll come back and, and talk to Lori for a few more minutes. You are listening to Financially Speaking with myself, Kathy Cookable, on the Inspired Choices Network. And when we return, we're going to continue to talk with Lori Hawkins about sales and the SOAR community and the Sacred Gifts program and anything else that happens to come up. We'll be right back. Too many of us get caught up in the unreal lives of reality television and complete to acquire stuff, which is setting us up to accumulate lots of debt. We're scared, confused, and don't know who to talk to. By tuning into Financially Speaking Radio Show with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook Noble, you'll learn tips you can use to improve your financial health, which in turn can improve your overall health and make for a very happy life. Live a life you can afford and enjoy. It is possible. Listen for Financially Speaking Radio Show every Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Mountain, and 1 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is Financially Speaking Radio Show 
with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook Noble. To participate in the program, call in the U.S. 815-880-8255, Canada 613-800-8736, or Skype us at Inspired Choices Network. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to Kathy at bookkeepplus.ca. Now back to the program. Welcome back, everyone. I am Kathy Cook Noble on the Inspired Choices Network, and today we've been enjoying our time talking to Lori Hawkins and excited to learn more about sales and the SOAR community and sacred gifts. And before we went to break, we were just talking about that program, the Sacred Gifts, and how it's designed to really help people get in touch with who they who they are and what gifts that they have, and how to really uh, in, enhance them as best that they can. Is that the best way to describe it, Lori? Yeah, I think absolutely. We have them inside of us. So it's really about discovering what they are, connecting with them so that you can live the best version of yourself and have the most success that you really deserve in business and life. Definitely. And those understanding your sacred gifts will really help you with your relationships with other people, your family, and your business. And I encourage anyone out there, if you're in the U.S., if you're in Canada, it's okay. Um, Lori has uh, access around the world to do the Sacred Gifts program. So I encourage you to get in touch with her and email her Email her as best at Lori at HawkInspired.com. And Lori is L-A-U-R-I-E. And Hawk Inspired, H-A-W-K, Inspired.com. And I'd encourage you to just email Laurie at, Laurie at hawkinspired.com at any time, even ask questions and see what other information uh, you need. Or if there's a question in business, Lori's going to be able to answer it. So <laughs> between the sacred gifts and the SOAR community and, the, and her sales training and business training, if there's a question you have, she's definitely able to answer it. So I encourage people to call her or email her. Um, Lori, what is the next step for you? Like what's, what's your mind? looking towards? Ooh, that's a deep question. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm really right now, <laughs> I really it's right five now minutes or less. for me is, <laughs> oh darn, um, really it's about, I just have this incredible, I'm turning 50 this year and have this incredible passion to just really build this this women's community in a big way so that we are connected and we are all growing and we're learning and being educated and being inspired and being uplifted and all of that. So for me, the next few years are going to be about building the SOAR community with the ultimate goal of having a retreat center where people can can come and, and spend some weekends and do some business retreats and do some fulfilled uh, retreats and really help not just women entrepreneurs, but all entrepreneurs and all families to become the best they can. It's a, a, just a lofty Beautiful. goal, right? <laughs> I'm going to help all yeah. women entrepreneurs <laughs> be the best they can. <laughs> and you know what? It's absolutely something I can see you doing. So, and there is so needed. It's so needed. There's so many groups out there, and I agree with you completely. I, um, I really never belonged to any of them, and the very few that I tried weren't right, right fit, to be honest. And then you develop this one, and you're like, that's it. You're able to take what everyone's thinking, and they don't know they're thinking, <laughs> and put it into a community. And I love that it's a community. It's not a it's not a group. It's not an agency. It's it's actually a community of women, and the energy is different there. And I know how weird that sounds for me to talk about energy because I'm more about like adding and subtracting and so forth. <laughs> but it's 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 really a very cool thing. I I know if somebody like me who works a very linear world uh, can see this, then it must be mind blowing for somebody who's a little bit more uh, or less linear <laughs> than me, don't you think? <laughs> Okay, you're awesome. Absolutely. I think that during Sacred Gifts, we realize there's a lot more emotion in there than uh, 
people maybe know than you do. <laughs> um, but it's, That's I, right. that, that again is what, yeah, it's what it actually is what I think makes you really amazing at what you do is that ability to take the linear logical side of things and also connect emotionally to people's stories. Because really finances are about people's stories. They're a huge part of our story. So and uh and yes, yeah, the SOAR community is about connecting people with their stories. Absolutely. And I I think it's it's gonna be one of those it's funny, next year, I, I'm hoping what we can do is next year this time you'll come back on and you'll be able to report on how it's opened up into new markets and even new countries if that's where you're going. <laughs> but for sure it's going to open up into new markets and I can see it because it's something that people really do need and want. And I know there's men out there listening that are in business and they're looking for the same thing. I completely understand that. And I know that with women, that's the growing number. The growing number of entrepreneurs is women right now, and they really are needing that community to get support with on growing their business and asking questions and just getting support or or just getting that that person that they connect with to say, yeah, run some ideas by me. You're on the right track or you're not on the right track or I can help you with introducing you to somebody. And I think that's where you've really brought all those cool pieces together. So... Next year, you'll come back and share with us about that, won't you? I will, absolutely. That sounds amazing. And also, I don't want men to feel left out because longer term, my husband and I, the retreat center will actually be so that we can run similar groups for men. So that's a part of the long-term vision. Perfect. That's awesome. Because I know that it's funny how uh, how things work, but a lot of a lot of things as they change, they also stay the same. So you have these groups that people are looking for and they change different types of groups, but the same quality and the same type of community that people are looking for has always been there. And I think when something resonates like the SOAR community, that's what really connects and it sticks and, and I think it's going to grow exponentially because of it. And and I'm excited because the Sacred Gifts, you're one of the few, the few licensed or accredited people in Canada that can implement and accredit somebody on this program, aren't you? I am one of the few that can walk them through discovering their sacred gifts. And so we do that in a couple of ways. It can be done individually or there will be group workshops coming up as well. So whatever suits somebody, it's pretty fun as you experience to walk through in a gift set and a group setting too. Exactly. Yeah, it's really neat. Um, so we have like just just about a minute left, Lori. And I'm what what would be the final thoughts that you would have for people listening, or and final encouragement that you'd like to give? I think the encouragement is that we all have amazing sacred gifts inside of us, and the more we can connect with those, the more all of our other conversations go away, our fear of selling, our fear of finances, really we start to understand that everything we need is either inside of us or with the connections that we create through community. And so finding a way to pull all that together in your life, somehow, some way, it all comes from really just trusting who you are inside. And I love working with teams and people to support that. That's awesome. Thank you, Lori. I'm so happy that I was able to get you. I finally got you talked into coming on the show, and I'm super grateful that you came. I've enjoyed having you here this afternoon. And next week, we are going to be talking about spending habits and where does your money go. So you'll want to stick with us and see us next week and talk about that. So thank you so much, Lori. Oh, thank you so much, Kathy. Awesome. Thank you for choosing to listen to Financially Speaking Radio Show. Kathy Cook Noble will return next Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Mountain, and 1 p.m. Pacific on InspireChoicesNetwork.com. We hope you'll join us. Until then, have the best week of your life by making the choices that bring you all that you desire.